So we're hosting this event to share Lakota culture with the public by spotlighting uh, our guest speaker today is Marty Tubal Sr., an acclaimed political cartoonist and illustrator. He is a member of the Oglala Lakota from the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. His innovative cartoons voice Native American perspective on contemporary political issues. He'll discuss his Pulitzer-nominated work with the Lakota Times, as well as his book illustrating uh, many Lakota language picture books in partnership with local educational nonprofit, the Lakota Language Consortium. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to you, Marty. Hi, my name is Marty Tubles, Marty Grant Tubles Sr. Um, I've been doing uh, cartooning kind of as a hobby since I was a young man. Uh, actually, a, a kid, you know, my uh, my uncles and stuff would uh, draw cartoons of themselves and each other, and uh, they'd share them and whatnot. And when I was a young child, I uh, saw that stuff, and I thought, well, it's, that's a great medium to be able to make people laugh through uh, funny drawings. So I started uh, doing it on the side, drawing my friends and whatnot, you know, basically, uh, you know, kind of amateurish kind of stuff. And then when I went to high school, I uh, got on the school newspaper and uh, do cart editorial cartoons then. That was in 1980, 1979, 1980, 81. Um, after that, I, after high school, I went to college, college at the uh, Colorado Institute of Art in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I studied there. After coming back, I went back, I went to work for, uh, uh, do Hamill Broadcasting, which is uh, KOTA out of Rapid City. So I did some commercial artwork, on-air camera work for uh, television. And then I went on to uh, uh, Timberland Corporation, which was a uh, commercial printer. Um, spent a few years there, then went to the art director for uh, Lakota Times, a weekly newspaper, uh, where I worked a few years uh, designing stuff and whatnot. Uh, that was about when the computer came around, you know, the Macintosh 512. So throughout most of my career, I've been um, integrating the old way of doing things into the new way of doing things, you know, using uh, uh, computers to uh, design, computers to print out things of that nature. Um, after that, I went to as a production artist for the University of South Dakota. Um, there we do a lot of, uh, promotional stuff and uh, things like that for the university. Um, then I started working for Rapid City Journal as a graphics editor, which I did for about seven years. So I spent a lot of time in, in newspapers. Uh, from there, I went to the Argus Leader, a uh, good night company out of Sioux Falls. That was the largest newspaper in South Dakota. <coughs> and uh, was graphics editor there as well. Um, at some point, you know, my, my children grew up, so I decided to go in, go back to college. So I went to uh, uh, the Art Institute here in Santa Fe, American Indian Arts Institute, IEIA, and uh, got my bachelor's in fine arts and uh, basically working as a freelance artist ever since. But through my whole career, I've been doing editorial cartoons, even way, way early on in the 80s. Uh, it was... Uh, you, you don't make much money off it. So I'd, you know, make 50 bucks or something and take the kids out to some movie and whatnot. But so it wasn't really a big, a big push. The real driving force is not money, you know, because, because of the deadlines and everything, you really have to enjoy it. You really, it really has to be something you want to do. And the money just kind of, you know, is, is a plus, but that's not why you do it, you know. In any case, so... Uh, what I'll do here is I'll, I'll continue talking, but I'll show you some of the stuff that, uh, how it works here. Now, these are illustrations that I've done for uh, uh, Lakota Language Consortium here. And basically they start out like sketches. So this, this would be a sketch of uh, something that we're gonna do in, the, in a booklet, let's say. And these were fancy dancers. So the page number and the sequence, and I'd send this to the editors, you know, and they they agree that say, yeah, that looks good, or that doesn't look good. Change this or change that. And then a, a the final painting would be done like this. And these these are uh, watercolors. So 
so they're done a little differently. You know, they're still done with a paintbrush and whatnot. So you go in and, uh, you know, pick up the colors. And this is this uh, watercolor. Some of it is a uh, dye sublimation, which was a, uh, a uh, high intensity dye that is used to use back in the old days for uh, color separations. And uh, so each, each one of these pieces will be done. And then I cut it, I put it in, scan it in the computer and then uh, drop the background, which is done separately. So I can control a little better and a little bit faster doing it that way. So one of the things about uh, about all this is that, that you got to be fast. You know, here's another sketch, another page, page number four, and here's the finished. So you can see how there's a rudimentary uh, uh, design work here, like you get the circle. The body's mapped out, proportions are done. You figure out where the knee is, the waist, how the elbows bend, where they meet, where you want the, the arm to curl around the fan, the fan itself. Then you kind of map in everything else you want. You, you know, a little direction here, try to get a little movement feel in the, the drawing itself. And then when I transfer it over, you're actually, this is actually painted right on this. So the painting is done, and then the pencil lines are erased, and then the, the ink is added to kind of make the image pop forward. Uh, at that point, I cut it out and I put the background in, which is a separate watercolor uh, splash. And so uh, you know, there's a lot of different techniques that you could do with, with the watercolor because it's quick. You know, basically in, in newspapers and whatnot, you know, you have to be fast. And so uh, something like this would be a watercolor, a real quick watercolor. And it still looks real nice. You know, it still gets, gets a, a lot of the stuff going without having to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, painting, you know, as it were. Such as, uh, go back to my screen. It's like this is a painting, it's just a, a painting you did. This is a, acrylic based. So if you, if you can see the shine on it, you can see where it's uh, actually paint is applied to the canvas. And these take a great deal longer. This is a knife chief a painting I did a few years ago. And so what I, what I am is a multimedia artist, which means I, uh, I do different disciplines as well. You know, so I would do uh, sculptures like this. This is a uh, bronze piece. So I cast the browns from a wax, lost wax process, which would, you know, I carved it out of wax. And then the, the top piece is uh, hammered copper. So this started out as just a sheet of copper, then you, you form it into this cup. And then you uh, solder it in the kind of chalice thing. So basically, what I try to do is work in all mediums, as many mediums as I can. Okay, let's go back to the screen. So here, here's the way things are done in the a few years back, I should say. I mean, you could still do it now. <clears throat> but basically, it was with pens, pen and ink work. Um, as you can see, there's a rapidograph pens here, uh, drafting pencils, the old dip pens, paint brushes, uh, the squares, 30 degree square, uh, some ink, Bombay ink, Higgins ink, and uh, this is a blue key line pencil. It's a drafting pencil and there's a sharpener there. And so, uh, yeah, just fumbling around a little bit. So you see how that uh, sharpener, there's the blue key line pencil. So lead is in it and it's, uh, it's in blue because the old cameras wouldn't pick up the blue ink, the blue uh, pencil. So you didn't have to erase. You could just draw right on the piece and then uh, you know, let the pencil fly. And it has, it's a wax based thing. So you don't have to worry about smudging your hand going over it and ruining the piece. 
there's a drafting pencil, automatic pencil, they call them. And, and then it saves a lot of time because you don't have to sharpen a lot of stuff, you know. Oops. There we go. There's a paragraph. There we go. The Pedagraph ink pen, these are all drafting pens that were developed uh, in the 50s, but we still use them. And of course, there's the old quill pens, which in the olden days, they'd use uh, feathers. Nowadays, we have these nice little nibs and tips that have different uh, textures and different line widths that you use. But they're uh, basically dip, you dip those in ink, a bit more hard to use. And of course, brushes you use for uh, heavy lines and uh, filling in a lot of large black areas. And those are number twos, sables. Uh, if you get a good brush, it'll last a long time. I, I still have brushes that uh, I used in art school the first time I went in 81. So, you know, I always tell my son, like, I got paintbrushes older than you are, literally. But there's a beveled edged uh, angle for to do your straight lines. It has to be beveled because it's if the edges aren't beveled, then uh, the ink will suck under it and uh, ruin your drawing. So you got to have these little grooves and those little edges. But of course, Higgins calligraphy ink. Uh, unfortunately, they don't, they don't make a good ink anymore. Uh, they used to be uh, in. They just stop making a really black, black ink. And a pen cleaner, of course, you need this stuff. Not that expensive. But all these tools here, they're really quite inexpensive. You can, well, barring the, the, the pens are kind of expensive, but everything else is pretty cheap. I use a Bristol uh, Stratmore. It's acid-free, so you know, it'll last a long time. You can archive it. Uh, it should last a couple hundred years. I usually keep a little dish of water around and uh, these are sketches for uh, editorial cartoon so you kind of go through a, a series of what what you're going to do so you do some quick sketches try to get the layouts uh, this is the final layout i was thinking of doing um, then i try to get a flow the copy here the text has to be uh, you know brought down to a point where people can read it quickly so you can select in tools there. Fast forward. Go to the sketching cross. So then you go into the blue key line and I'm sketching in here now. So I don't have to worry about erasing these lines later. I don't have to worry about my hands smearing them all over the place either. So it gives me a nice clean area to work in. So I'm, I'm roughing out um, all the drawings so I don't have to uh, do too much thought when I'm working with the ink because the uh, ink takes a lot of concentration because you it, because it's wet ink, it's really easy to smear or really easy to get on your hand and ruin the piece. You really got to concentrate. And so I try to do these sketches really tight, which means uh, a lot of detail. So I don't have to think about it while I'm drawing it, I can concentrate on the, the way the pen is reacting to the paper. And uh, the viscosity of the ink, which is the thickness or the, the way the ink is running that day, which is usually varies. These are a couple of new agers. And the uh, Serpent Mound is a place that uh, was made by ancient natives. And it was uh, uh, basically giant snakes and whatnot that were, uh, they could only see from the air. And they're, they're huge structures. Nobody knows why they were made. There's a lot of speculation, as, like these two guys here are speculating. And un unfortunately, what they're doing is having a lot of people that are ruining the site. They would bury things there out there and uh, 
totems and whatnot. And uh, it was still an archaeological site. So it's kind of ruining the area. So we're trying to keep people from going around there and uh, whatnot. And that's what this, this uh, cartoon is about, just kind of poking fun at the people that are going there bearing these things. This is an actual speed too. So I try to keep things really fast. I'll speed up a little bit. Okay, we'll go the ink. Okay, now the preliminary sketch is done, so I can go on ink. So I do the rough outline. Then I go in with the pitograph. I use the, the quill, the brushes, as you can see, and I use the quill here for the uh, contouring lines. Then I go in with these uh, mechanical pens, with a mechanical pin, because the pin gives you a, a specific line, whereas these go thin and thick depending on the pressure of the pen. So that gives you a uh, gives you more depth when you're drawing. So what I'm doing too is also putting, the only thing touching the paper is my one finger, my one knuckle on this side. So I'm trying to keep that in the dry zones of the, the piece to keep from uh, smearing the ink. These little cross hatching lines uh, give give the piece depth and also uh, contour contrasting. Speed up a little bit. You see how the. And move on next next character. Speed up a little bit. So here's here's the pencil drawings went down. For some reason it jumped. And there's the ink. Work as final. Then the dialogue is it's scanned in the computer, then the dialogue is added. And there's the finished piece. A separate mound was built by an advanced alien race from another planet, but why did they leave it here? Is it a sign, a map, a secret message? Why it could even be a giant spaceship made of dirt that we could fly to distant heavens. Yeah, there's no way, like, no way uh, Indians could have piled up dirt. Basically, cartoon. And that would be shipped off to the editor, and the editor would run it and all that stuff. That's the way it used to be done. 2013, and uh, I'll show you the way we the way I do it now. This is this program here is uh, called Photoshop, and I, I like using it. I've used it for a number of years uh, since its inception in 1989. A little bit about the tools. It's going to jump right away into the sketch. This is about uh, when they had the cathedral fire in, in Europe, uh, Trump was giving, a, President Trump at the time, he was giving a, 
advice to the French people on how to put out the fire, <coughs> that they should use them. Forest Service planes and drop chemical retardant on the cathedral. So uh, this cartoon is based on that. And so I, uh, I still, this is on the computer, but I like the blue key line. I like drawing, like, I like the blueness, I think, even though I don't really need, it doesn't really need to be blue anymore. But, you know, if you use gray, all the time in uh, computers, you're, it kind of gets lost with the black line when you start going and doing that. So I tend to use, still use the old style blue key line. So I'll map in, basically mapped in the, the aircraft, which is uh, kind of a cartoon version of a SPAD, uh, World War I aircraft. Oh, the Southwest Camel, I'm sorry. Since Trump's an old guy, he'd probably be driving something old. Let's speed it up. And uh, he, made a, he made a point that when the Forest Service was having a fire, he pointed out that in, uh, in Europe, they don't have fires because they rake the forest. So he's suggesting they should rake uh, the national forest. So in this, the, plan, the, the joke on this is that he's uh, dumping rakes on the fire in Europe. Speed up. Darker, put stuff in. I'll start drawing. So at, at this point, there's there's no physical um, drawing. There's no physical uh, artwork. It's all on video screen. It's all uh, zeros and ones. And that's, just, that's the drawback of doing stuff on the computers. You don't have an original artwork at the end. Whereas uh, with the ink work, I, have, I still have all my original stuff. I'll speed it up a little bit. Well, the thing, another thing too is that the, the computer is not going to make you a better artist. It's not going to make you a better drawer. That's something you have to uh, really work at. You know, it's a lot of, lot of, lot of practice. Rakes. You do, you do kind of have to learn to draw a lot of mundane things like a rake, being able to see a rake at a different, uh, different point of view. So you also got to try to memorize that part of it, you know, being able to draw items like that to make them look believable. Cleaning up the letters. That's Trump's old logo from his uh, Trump Airlines. It's a failed thing. So I threw that on there for those people who know such things. Going in to cross hatching. You can see where I dropped out most of the key line stuff. I left, I left this line in to show where the shadow would hit on the wing. So when I go in the cross hatching, I know where to stop. OK, 
Okay, get the cross side and cross the wing. Notice I change directions and clean up the lines with an eraser. I change directions, one going vertical, one going uh, horizontal. And that's to uh, to differentiate when, when you have two opposing planes going one direction, one going the other. So it's kind of a nice way to uh, separate the two values, as it were. Now go highlight them, highlight the edges. And I'll do this here. Goggles. These are the he goes. He must use like a uh, a sun tanning thing or whatever. But he must wear these goggles like this because his eyes are always pink around the outside of his eyes and everything else kind of fake tan. So he used the sun the uh, kind of goggles you'd have in a uh, tanning booth. Go ahead and clean it up. More depth. I I add a uh, a second layer here because it, it all works in layers. If you look off to the extreme lower uh, right right here, these are different layers. So I put a purple down so I can tell the difference in the colors. So I use a uh, uh, neutral color like purple and from my palette. That way I could see where I'm coloring. And since it's a separate layer, I'm not coloring on the purple, but it's actually floating. So I'll go through and I'll color broad areas where I want the color to hit. Then I can go in, I can adjust everything. I can single out whole areas for uh, different techniques. So uh, aircraft actually has a, its own color scheme, so <clears throat> I have to figure it out. And then I'll go through, clean up the edges, add the blue, Trump logo, get, get some nice shading in here. Fast forward it, do the logo, add some patches, add a few lines here, show it's old. Actually, paint job done. I like to add a lot of detail, even though for cartoons, you really don't have to, but it's something I like to do. Uh, I like to do stuff for my readers. Press the rakes. And I have a background, some smoke, flying over fire. There's a cartoon. <coughs> well, that's where they're done nowadays. <laughs> Is that it? <clears throat> a lot of these uh, editorial cartoons are. Uh, let's see where we got that. Okay, 
This is a portfolio of the type of work I do I'll start at the beginning. So what this is a to promote myself, I uh, I, uh, I make a PDF that I can send to the potential client and it has my information and then uh, my name and then a little sample of my work. I do can do hand lettering and stuff like that. So and it's a logo and just to show samples to potential client they'll get this and they, they could print it out as well on their end this is a uh, a graphic i did when i was in newspapers about uh, the sundance and uh how the trees set up the alignments of the stars uh chinchasha and how it smoked what's in the pipe uh, the nipi uh, which some people call a sweat lodge how it's set up uh, piercing uh, Sundance grounds and all this. And all this information was gleaned from uh, spiritual people. And uh, I actually went went to some noted medicine men and got permission to do this before I actually did it. So I'd be able to have an accurate portrayal of what it is and uh, to share with readers without giving away too much, too much sacred knowledge, but just enough to that people will understand everything about it. Of course, it's a low res scan. Sorry about that. They can't really read it too well. And there's Black Hills. And how the sun grants are situated. Uh, ceremony grounds. And this is another graphic I did for the Argus Leader. This was about the Leonard Peltier shootout in the 73, 74. <clears throat> and the, the types of weapons that were there versus the types the FBI guys had, how many shots were fired, the layout and where the shooting took place. A lot of uh, research went into each one of these. So we had source material and things like that. So you really had to go in and uh, figure out where the lay of land and all that was, uh, how far out they were shooting at them, uh, a timeline of what happened. The breakdown of the air, Peltier's vehicle. There was a story that went along with it, so. And these are uh, examples of lettering, so, uh, but the thing about rather than using you know type letters that you could get in the in computer programs, you know that uh, you know the different type fonts that you could buy a lot of decorative ones. If you make a logo using those types, you can't copyright it. Whereas this one is copyrightable, so nobody can reproduce it in any form. The same thing with this, you know, I I could have used the uh, Times bold. But instead, I redesigned based on times. So now this this whole logo is uh, copyrighted. So they, the copyright protections. The same thing with Sun News. These are mastheads on newspapers. And these are logos I've done. Uh, good doctor, 24-7 uh, video doctoring uh, this is South Australia. They have a huge distance problem. So of course they solve that by uh, using video conferencing and whatnot for diagnostics. So this is uh, the logo for their program. This is a Hep C, fix Hep C logo. And this one for Lower Burl Wildland Firefighters. That's for a patch. This is the one I did for OLC Public Safety. That's a patch. And this is colorectal health I did for uh, Aberdeen Area India Health Board. And here's a sample of a painting I've done. And this painting is four feet by six feet, so it's pretty huge. And here's a sample of silverwork and 
a uh, clay sculpture. This clay sculpture is about uh, 24, 24 inches high. And this is a wood sculpture, uh, ancient cedar I got from the Badlands. And here are some paintings. This is illustrative work. And this is a painting and uh, vehicle wraps. So basically what I'm trying to do is show, show the client that I can do a variety of different things depending on their needs. There's a folder design. And here's a book jacket for LLC's children's book cover. It's a box design, so it was a puzzle. And uh, the bo outer box for it, the puzzle was the power puppies. It's a die cut to show that I could do technical stuff. And uh, these are for, these are, uh, these are artworks are kind of like editorial cartoons, but they're done to promote uh, Hep C, which at the time was, uh, you know, they're eighty-four thousand dollars for the cure. It was like twenty-eight pills for twenty-eight days, but there's actually a uh, a, a generic form of this for fifteen hundred bucks, and so this kind of trying to highlight the difference between two. You you can go to the pharmaceutical companies like here in the United States who has this patent and I charge this amount or you can go to India and get it here so uh, at least be trying to put the spotlight on that these are uh, cartoons that I do for the fun of it Tabaloka is uh, Lakota for bull which is about uh, what this is about pretty much the subject matter it says Tarnation, look out, boys. An Indian has a six shooter. Of course, it's sitting shooting sixes. And this is a uh, res dogs that I do. And it started out as a political strip, but now it's kind of a family one. So, uh, yeah, about the dogs and whatnot. Basically, prairie dogs. And Spock here. It says, this actual line from the movie, it says, Nero, who has destroyed my home planet and most of its 6 billion inhabitants, I estimate no more than 10,000 survived. While the essence of our culture has been saved in the elders who now reside upon the ship, I'm now a member of endangered species. That's from the movie, so the Indian guy sitting in the audience saying, welcome to the club, Spock. These are uh, editorial cartoons. These are done, this is done in ink. So no dapple, and then of course water is life. Make a stand. And thank you so much, Marty, for speaking with us today okay. and um, sharing your artwork. And we're very, very, very appreciative of the work you do. Okay, nice seeing you all. Take care.